Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This time I'm collaborating with my long-term flatmate and co-collaborator with, we did like book clubs and shit together, uh, and then they all died. Yeah. It happens. A but death. A death. <laughs> Lizzie from Bombadil Bookish, their links will be down below. This is going to be a two-part recommendation video where we use lamps to recommend you great books. We have too many lamps. This is what this video is teaching us, is we, we own too many lamps. Well the thing is, and I did say that I would say this, we're quite a neuro spicy household and we are not fans of the big light. No. There are two pendant lights in the living room. They're never on. And if they are, something's happened. Something's happened, something's gone wrong, or we're back late from a night out. Yeah. It's the only time, and that's only because it's the nearest to the front door. <laughs> but we are big fans of lamps and yeah. we have accumulated a fair few, enough for two videos worth. Yeah, it's a bit, bit embarrassing really, isn't it? It is and it isn't. I quite like it. So there are 10 lamps. We have 10 recommendations each and we're going to be splitting it into five recommendations for my channel and five for Lizzie's channel. So Lizzie, yes. as the guest on my video today, would you like to go and choose a lamp? Yes. No, well, do I go for the ones that don't look like a lamp first or do I go with the ones that look like a lamp first? That's totally up to you. I would recommend going for the lamps you can lift. <laughs> Okay. I really enjoy just the real slow <laughs> reveal of the lamp. So, do you want to stand centre? There we go. I don't need to be in it. You can just show the lamp. <laughs> Talk about the lamp. I'm here too. <laughs> okay, be serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, holding, I'm holding a pineapple lamp too. Oh. Okay, so this is a lamp that lives in my room because, I mean, Hannah would not have it any other way. Also, this lampshade is not the right lampshade for it. Um, is it, oh, it is attached. It is, it is attached, <laughs> it's just not the correct Barely. one. Um, this was gifted to me as a leaving house present from a dear housemate of mine when I was living in Cornwall. She had her own shop and I had my eyes on this lamp and also the light bulb that went with it that is no longer with us. R.I.P. A light bulb with a flamingo in it, which is as gaudy as it sounds. So this golden pineapple is one of my favourite lamps ever. And I always, You started always with a strong there. lamp to be fair. I struggled the most with this one though, to fit this vibe, so I thought I'd get the hard one out of the way first. That's fair. Do I show you what book I picked then? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna put the lamp down. Yeah, you do whatever you like. Do you want to hold the lamp whilst I talk, and then I'll hold the lamp whilst you talk? You might have to shuffle slightly though, so you can get both of them in. I went for Blackwater Sister because this is a Malaysian thriller fantasy with supernatural elements into it. And for me, well, I remember when I first read it, the opening is very gentle. It's very contemporary. And then out of nowhere, it gets real wild real quick. Mm. And I feel like this, <laughs> the, the, the gentle lampshade and then the tropical vibes, it worked really well to kind of show the two sides of both the literary contemporary stuff and the supernatural wild stuff. When I first read this, I described this as a jungle cat because you don't even notice it's there and suddenly it's thrashing at you and there's murder and mafias and all sorts of stuff. I really, really like this. This is the only book I've read by Zen Cho. I have tried a couple of others and not vibed with them as much, but I really, really enjoyed Blackwater Sister. If you're looking for LGBT rep, BIPOC rep and mental health rep, it has all of the above. And it also has a really interesting take on a Malaysian woman who was raised in America returning to her homeland and feeling completely disjointed from it without it being disrespectful to either because I've read a couple of others where it's like second generation immigrants returning home for a holiday or whatever and it's almost like derogatory towards the original home this doesn't do that it's a really good time it's really fun and if you like spooky ghosty stories with mafias and murders and other shit it's a whole vibe <laughs> so I will leave this here and then if you would like to hand me the lamp and you can tell the good people what you recommended for pineapple lamp. So I went really different vibe, Hannah. I went with more just the wild side. Mm -hmm. Didn't really think about the very plain lampshade. It didn't go with it originally. <laughs> it just doesn't fit anyway. Um, <clears throat> I've chosen Glitterati. I don't know why I did that so dramatically. I loved uh, it. Glitterati. I loved it. <laughs> just a real dramatic <laughs> reveal. Chose Glitterati Beat by an Oliver K. Langmead. This is a wild book. I don't even know how to explain it. It's that crazy. So much shit goes on. But it follows this guy who's a fashionista in this dystopian world where the fashionistas rule the world and are all in these penthouses and they see the poor folk down below in like the streets and that's disgusting. And they also have some weird like modifications where they can choose to forget things and it gets dark really, really quickly. Um, 
but this whole book is a wild ride. The writing is so compelling. I think I'd read this in like a day, I feel like. Um, and I really like the main character because he learns very quickly that things aren't all as it seems. He realises is he's gone through many, many, many times that his mind has been manipulated by this. Basically the Illuminati. That is basically who controls the world. Hence Glitterati. And he basically learns all of the crazy shit that happens. And actually the ending is really, really sad. However, there's loads of content warnings for this book. Like, I think pretty much everything um, is in here somewhere in some way. So definitely check content warnings if you are planning on... Thankfully. <laughs> I was saying a really important point. Thanks, buddy. Um, if you are planning on reading this, just because I know there's lots of things that threw me. Like, there's kidnapping of a child. Accidentally, and I will preface that, there's a lot of accidental things that happen. And it just it happens to all this one guy. But just as a FYI, content warnings, it is important. Oh, also, it's got gold on it. <laughs> Lizzie insists this is a lamp. Look, there's light, okay? It counts. Why did it change its colour? So, as you can see, this is a dragon turret. So, I have picked a dragon-based book, and I think you've done the same. So, that's it. I've got... I just wanted to pick up the one that was at the front. It was nice and easy. <laughs> Very little lamp. Gentle. Gentle lamp. Mm -hmm with a dragon. Where did you get this from? So I got that in a shop in Oxford. I loved it immediately because of course I did. It was also it's an, like, that's... It's an infuser thing. I was going to say. Put, you can put infuser reeds in it and it smokes and it's really really cool. I just love the look of it. I'm big into like crap like this I You're guess. You're a nerd. It's just beautiful. I mean look at him. He's all like growly and shit. So yeah that's why. Um, yeah, but, it was a, but it was a shop in Oxford like Main Street. I don't remember which one because there's loads of them. Cool. Show us your dragon. <clears throat> okay. Ooh. I have picked Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rondell. This was a middle grade. It is a middle grade. It still exists. Um, it is, it's a middle grade. It follows this young man who basically finds he is the inheritor of a magic secret portal to a whole new land where all of the creatures which are mythological live. And this portal is in danger. Uh, he meets a whole cast of characters that are all absolutely wonderful. As a middle grade, this is fantastic. The dragon isn't all that important. They exist and they need to find them. And actually, the dragon they do find is this tiny little, like, dragonfly, basically. It's really, really cute. But it does breathe fire and is a dragon, as it reminds everyone at every single point of the story. And is actually very pivotal at the end of the book. I like the messages this brings forward about being yourself, having the courage to talk out, um, having the courage to kind of stand up to bullies, essentially. Um, and I like that the adults around them, so there's like a cast basically, it's a pirate crew and the pirate captain is really respectful and un and is very much like, oh you're saying something's going on? Something's going on, we'll go sort that out. Because a lot of time in middle grades, adults just kind of like, nah shut up you stupid kid, this, no, there's none of that. They're very much like, oh okay, we must go do something. We must. <laughs> we must. Um, but as middle grades go this is really fun. I think this one, like the Waterstones children's book of the year last year i think but this was given to, to me by my sister so great gift nice for my gentle dragon book i have gone with fire by fire with fire by destiny soraya which got loads of hype when it came out as the fairy loot edition and then kind of disappeared hype wise which i don't understand because it's so good this is sister rivalry both of them have been trained to hunt and kill dragons except one afternoon casually one of them accidentally binds her soul to a dragon and feels that she actually needs to protect these dragons and there's this whole like creepy church involved what well, again what i really like about this and actually very similar to your impossible creatures is the adults in this are not like it's fine our teenage kids can deal with this <laughs> like there's a battle scene where they're like they call their mum who's like on like this warrior sabbatical and they're like we need you to come home asap and she's like cool the weapons are in this room hold down the fort we'll be right there and then they rock up and there's like a great fight scene at the end there is a little bit of like an enemies to lovers romance in it but it's very like subplotty it's very ya so it moves very very fast uh destiny Soraya is actually a latinx author so it has bipoc and it has some sapphic rep in it as well Ooh. so all the rep good time gentle dragons and they're, the dragons are super cute in it as well. The dragons are super cute in it. These are the kind of dragons you want to hang out with, so I was here for it. <laughs> so, this is a well, this is a lava lamp. Do you need to put it here? People can actually see the colours then. Oh yeah. 
There we go. Uh, it's a lava lamp. Um, it is pansexual lava lamp though, because uh, it's blue, pink, and yellow. So <laughs> love to see it. We bought in Dunnell because we saw it. Um, and I love a lava lamp. Um, unfortunately, it is a little bit broken, as you can tell by the little bit of. Um, well, you probably can't see. But you can. You can bring it closer to show people. There is a little bit that's like gloopy, uh, right there. But um, it's a, it's a vibe, isn't it? So that's why I've kept it. It's like almost like it. a little. I've just realised it's kind of like a little space lamp, and I haven't chosen a space book. Oh, I have. <laughs> and now I feel like I should have chosen a space book. Do you want five minutes? No. No. No, okay. it's fine. Okay. Really basic bitch answer. I went with Heartstopper because it has oh. the LGBT vibes. But also, it does match. And it it colour matches. It. Yeah, because it. it's yeah. it's pink and blue. Yeah, no. So, I, think oh. you, I think you win. <laughs> like, that's such a. No, it's oh. okay because the book. It's fine. We've got two different vibes. It's okay. 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 How have you not heard of Heartstopper? You've definitely heard of Heartstopper. It was the Netflix sensation. Season three is coming out real soon. Although Olivia Coleman's not going to be in it because she double booked herself. Because she double booked herself. Because she double booked herself. Herself like an idiot, and she feels really bad about it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Am I right? Genuinely, this is about two gorgeous boys falling in love. One of them is bisexual and discovers that through the narrative, and one of them has an eating disorder and other issues that he's dealing with. But it is so wholesome and so genuinely true to the teenage experience that it has been relatable and related so often. Everyone recommended it. I picked it up very early doors in my YouTube career, whatever the fuck this is, and really, really loved it, lapped it up, have recommended it to everyone, and then obviously had to get the special editions because of course I did. So super easy recommendation, and I will be genuinely shook if you've not read it yet, because where have you been? What rock have you been living under? You know? I chose Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is one of my favourite sci-fi books I have ever read. Mm -hmm. Um is incredible. Andy Weir does something with sci-fi because I found a lot of sci-fi authors tend to talk down to you mm -hmm. with all the science around it. Whereas this book, it just feels natural. Like it doesn't feel forced, it I doesn't actually, feel explained. I mentioned it in my best books of the year because it reads more like a contemporary. And you're right, he doesn't talk down to you. He does really well at kind of balancing the science, mm -hmm. but he's also not trying to overcomplicate it. Yeah. Sometimes, and I think it's not necessarily that even talking down to you, I think sci-fi writers will talk about science fiction in a way that makes it so outlandish you couldn't possibly understand and he yeah. doesn't do that at all and it's the same with the martian i almost uh recommended the martian because i also really liked it but i would be remiss not to talk about project hail mary i love the main character in this i can't remember his name at the moment because it's been a long time since it's I've been it. a long time uh, the main character guy to be fair no one speaks Ryland. to him directly i'm sorry Ryland. i feel like i um, remember he basically wakes up on this space mission with no memory of why he's there, what his name is, and where the hell he is. And li literally, it's him waking up and going, oh my god, what the fuck has happened? Mm -hmm. And it's so great, because he has this minor panic, and then he's obviously very logical as a person, that's clear very quickly, because he starts going down the steps of what the hell could be going on. And it's so good, because when he starts to remember things, you follow it through. And there is a character in this, I'm not going to give it away, it's the most wholesome character I think I've read in a long, long time. I love them so much, which is crazy, because... If you know, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I don't like the real life thing that we have in the world. I loved it. E everything about this book. If you like a sci-fi and you like kind of like gentle contemporaries and you kind of just want like a little bit of spice thrown in there. If you've enjoyed anything go. by Annie Hazelwood, but you're like, I need more science and less tension, but more like dramatic tension. Think Jason Bourne meets STEM. Mm, yeah. It's a good time. It is a good time. It's a good time. I highly recommend this. Highly, 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 highly. It's so good. Really? Time for a big boy. This was gifted to me this Christmas. This is the newest lamp in our lamp collection. It is a stack of books that just has a standard IKEA lamp shoved through it, which I think is so funny. My mum bought this for me from a craft fair because she knows I bloody love a lamp and I bloody love a classic. And these are like really old. I don't think anyone would have ever read these. They are just old tomes turned into a book or stuck onto an Ikea lamp. And it's kind of a vibe because this is also like a really yellow tinted fiber kind of I love light bulb. light bulbs so much. I love decorative light bulbs, which you're... Yeah, so the only thing it doesn't have is a lampshade. I don't think it really needs one, it's fine. But I just think it's a complete vibe. But I thought I really like the fact that this is very classic. It's trying really hard to be a classic. So 
when it gets to me recommending a book, I have a classic to recommend to you. But in the meantime, Lizzie, what book did oh, you, you pick? Oh, you pick? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm stood here holding a lamp. You so. are. I can't get the book okay. unless I hand it over. So to you. no surprises here at all, and you're not going to guess by the cover because it's got nothing on the cover. Um, I just went with vibes because I mean, look, mm -hmm. it would not look out of place there. But it's actually um, a copy of Lord of the Rings. This is a bind up that I found on. It's like vintage or eBay or something, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it was some. And I was really scared because this book didn't arrive, and luckily the person who lives on a street that sounds very very similar to ours bought it around here and he was like i feel like you wanted this it's a part to parcel he was really really lovely about it mm -hmm. but i was like thank god um but this is a really stunning copy i love lord of the rings if you know me at all it is my entire... bookish things should yeah, have away. it's my it's my entire kind of brand i guess um but if you also have you haven't read lord of the rings or at least know of it by the films where have you been again living under a rock clearly. um but i love i love this story again it's very much of don't underestimate anyone um, a story of kind of like friendship and love and kind of good versus evil and good how good will always come out on top kind of thing but it's a hell of a battle um there's, there's loads of battles however i will say if you don't if you haven't read it yet and you're thinking of it please just listen to the andy circus audiobooks because mm. if you're not a fantasy reader it's so a, intense it's a great way of listening to this story and Andy circus does a great 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 job of it hearing him do all the accents is hilarious and also Hearing Gollum's voice again. Love it. But yeah, this is wonderful. Classic fantasy. Classic. Of course, of course I was going to recommend this. It is heavy. So if at any point okay. you feel the need to put it down. Oh, it's all right. It's not no, no, no. It was all right to begin with. And then I was still here going, my arms are achy. So if you do feel the need to put it down at any point, I'll This understand. is like modelling. <laughs> <laughs> the recommendation I've gone for is Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. And it's layered. Okay. This recommendation is layered. Obviously, it's a classic, Jane Austen. Northanger Abbey is a parody, essentially. It was one of the first parodies of gothic fiction because Jane Austen thought that whilst literature was really popular, you could never take yourself too seriously. And she thought that all the girlies who were reading these like really spooky books and becoming obsessed with like the kind of Jane Eyre style heroines Rebecca and Rebecca, Rebecca yeah. and Blue, but actually Rebecca came later. But yes, like that kind of like, Bluebeard, Gothics, uh, Castle on Tranto, uh, Mysteries of Udolfo, those all came out around this time. And Jane Austen was like, girls chill. <laughs> Ghosts aren't real. And she wrote this romance about a young girl who is obsessed with becoming a gothic heroine and her best friend is obsessed with becoming a gothic heroine to the point that it actually scuppers a potential romance and she has to learn to be an adult and she has to learn to grow up and chill the fuck out. And what I really liked about it is the fact that that kind of modern day, let's not get caught up in the fictionalization of something, really felt like a classic pretending to be modern, pretending to be classic. Mm -hmm. Hence, Classic IKEA lamp. <laughs> you know, it's not actually <laughs> it's not actually a gothic fiction novel. It's a parody of a gothic fiction novel that feels like a gothic fiction novel and does the gothic fiction things to take the piss out of gothic fiction, which in itself was a parody of other ghost stories because it wasn't a real thing until Horace Walpole rocked up and said, "Hey, I've got this. I found this new genre in Italy," and everyone was like, "Oh my god, that sounds sensational!" And he just made it up. No, he that. made the whole thing up. None of it was true. So I just feel like that works because layered. So that's my recommendation. Plus Northanger Abbey. Jane Austen is a classic for a reason. I love her. So this will be our last lamp for this video. And then if you want to continue this, there will be links down below for you to check out Lizzie's video. So Lizzie, would you like to choose the final lamp? I would. So this is one of my favorite lamps ever. It is Ikea, so it's a bit basic, but this is my um, Victorian orphan candle lamp. Victorian um, orphan lamp! And it is here got a candle, just don't look too closely at the grossness. Um, mm. But it's really cool, it's got a dimmer switch on it. It's a cute little Ikea lamp. It's really cute. It's fucking huge though, I don't quite remember. Really <laughs> yeah, it's a big lamp. They did a smaller um, size, but you wanted the bigger one. I do, and it is, it's, it's very good for lamp. light. Yeah, it's a good light. We haven't had it out for ages, right? No, it used to be over there. Yeah. And none of us sit over there anymore. No. I chose a book that you actually unhauled to me in the first place. Oh, lol. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Not because I didn't like it, just because I wasn't going to read it. So Lizzie and I went to Bath to see my friend Lena and we went to Toppings and I didn't buy anything. I was really good, but Lizzie did buy <laughs> uh, Mischief Acts by Zoe Gilbert, which is a signed first edition. And then the longer it sat on your shelf, the less you felt like you actually wanted to pick it up, yeah. which is hilarious to me because one of the recommendations that you've picked for video two, I think you would really enjoy because you enjoyed that, you'll enjoy this. I mean, I might end up reading it, to be honest. I might just get it on audio, though. Do the audio. Do yeah. the audio. It's so good. So, Mischief Axe follows, essentially, a young man slash hunter who is betrayed by people of his court. And you have no idea when this era is. It feels almost pre-Viking, right? But after that, his soul inhabits the forest surrounding where he was betrayed. And every generation after that experiences some element of mischief related to this mysterious figure known as the Hunter. And it starts almost like a Beowulf epic. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like a Shakespearean tragedy. And then it has like Greek myths tied in it. And then it becomes at the very, very end, it's a modern contemporary. And the way it is written is so clever because it's not quite mixed media, but it is. And it has such a weird accumulation of things where it is both historical and modern and i just really really like that it is it it just works like as a mixture of all these random things it just works and if you enjoy kind of those traditional epics or historical fiction or even speculative fiction with elements of paranormal and british folklore because you find out this woods is in the london is in london so all these things are happening in a very familiar place and I loved it. It was so clever. And I'm so glad that you unhauled this to me because I'm never letting it go. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I am recommending Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Silvia Moreno Garcia is one of Hannah's favourite authors. And Hannah's actually doing a read along. If you didn't know, I'm sure you do. We're on, we're on Hannah's channel, so obviously. A modern Gothic, I'd say. It's set, well, it's kind of set in a timeless period. Again, it's not really. It quite feels clear. 50s, but it isn't clear it isn't when clear. it is. And we follow Naomi, whose sister sister it's sister is it cousin it's her cousin yeah her, a family member catalina catalina is married to some shady guy some shady in, man in the countryside and so naomi goes from the city to basically go hey, what is happening girl? what the hell's going on and basically it just gets more wild as the story progresses and there's so many awesome it's got like sentient house trope yeah it's got oh, real psychedelic. manipulative antagonist men psychedelic uh women who are like nah fuck you uh, yeah. we love that um badassery all over the place love you have it. you have people who you think you like and then actually they're the worst they are the worst um but naomi is amazing as a female character she's one of my favorites i mm -hmm. think as female characters go like she's great honestly she's great also um it's so my mind say it's latina x so great rep there and i think that's why it feels a bit timeless because where this time period was it would be quite difficult for this society because it kind of feels Americanized. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's South yeah. America or Spain or anything. It very much feels like a. It's, a, it's been Westernized, yeah. but it hasn't been. It doesn't actually lose any of its classic no. Mexicana to it. No, no and I love it. I love it so much. I mean. It's five stars. Yeah, sentient house with mushrooms involved. Creepy. That's what I'll say. And ghosts. Yeah. Oh my god, the ghost. Manipulation. The ghost in this take you by such a surprise because it comes out of nowhere, but also it makes but sense. It also makes sense. It also makes sense. We recently it was literally last month's read, and rereading it, I was like, oh my god, it was here the whole time. All of this setup, all of this payoff. Ten yeah. out of ten recommendation, yeah. Lizzie. Great. Congrats. Also feel like gothic and like I took that as gothic orphan, so gothic, gothic. orphan. Loved it. So yeah. That's probably it. Okay, that's it from us for this video. Go over to Lizzie's for part two. If you want to leave a little lamp emoji to let us know that you were here in the comments down below, um, make sure to like and subscribe. Treat yourself to something from Waypoint Books because it supports me and my content. And actually, get, I think you can get most of these on there. Pretty much every book on this list is available via Waypoint. Or will be after this video, right? <laughs> I may spend some time putting some more products on Waypoint. And most importantly, have a nice day.